Hi guys! Today we are reviewing the IB Cooling Alraflow X240 Snow Edition. It's a budget all-in-one cooler with a very clean and nice design. I chose this cooler because it complements the white color scheme I am planning to do on my rig. This model has RGB lighting, which I think will appeal to builders who are into PC lighting. Now let's take a look at the quick specs from IB Cooling's website. After unboxing, I noticed that it does not come with a remote control for the internal RGB controller. It's not a complete deal breaker, but it would have been nice especially to builders who do not have RGB headers on their motherboard but want to constantly change the RGB config of the cooler. Let's now look closely into the individual parts that came with the box. It has a motherboard backplate, Intel bracket, AMD bracket, two 120mm fans, the fans use hydraulic bearings and rubber pads to reduce noise while spinning. It also comes with a fan splitter, perfect if you're running out of fan headers on your motherboard. A SATA connector to power the pump. Note that the pump will always run at full speed if you will be using this to power it up. Doing so will not affect performance, but I think it may affect longevity since the pump will always run at full power even when not necessary. It has an internal RGB controller. Use this if your motherboard does not have RGB headers like mine. And don't forget the RGB splitter to connect your fans and other RGB devices. Now let's take a look at the radiator and pump loop. The radiator's dimensions are just enough for it to fit in any standard ATX or MATX case with minimal issues. The pump is rather simple with its round design which I like. It sports ID Cooling's logo at the middle and a subtle round RGB ring around it. The sleeve tubes have a premium feel and looks quite sturdy. I already removed the screws and thermal paste from the plastic and placed them in a small bowl. I'm more comfortable working with this as it prevents me from accidentally losing my grip when picking up screws. Next thing I know, it flies or rolls away. Try it, it may help. Oh, and let's not forget the trusty manual. Okay, I'm done reading the manual. Let's start mounting it. First, we mount the motherboard backplate and screws at the back of the motherboard. Then place the washers at the front and secure the bracket using the long nuts. Connect the pump bracket to the pump and secure by turning it clockwise. Apply a decent amount of thermal paste on the processor, then mount the pump using the mounting screws. Tighten the mount using a Phillips screwdriver. I'm unable to mount the radiator at the top of my case due to case size limitations, so I'm going to mount it at the front and set the fans to intake. I'm fearing this might increase my GPU's operating temperatures due to the radiator directly blowing air to it. We'll find out later on the benchmarks. Connect the fans and RGB headers and we're done! For the benchmarks, I'll start with Signbench R15. Ambient temperatures were maintained at 27 degrees and CPU idling temperatures were captured at 32. Here are the results for Signbench for the four cores of my i7-7700. I also did the benchmark on Adobe Premiere by rendering an 11-minute clip, capturing temperatures at different points of the rendering process and then averaging them. Here are the results. I'm unable to make a comparison for my previous cooler for the first two benchmarks as I have already run out of time. Fortunately, I have saved my previous benchmarks using an old cooler and came up with this comparison for three games that I tested with the Alraflow. Again, ambient temperatures were maintained at 27 degrees and idling temperatures were captured at 32. The GPU was barely affected as the temperature only increased by a hairline. I was surprised that there was only about 5-7% to difference between my Deepcool Gamex Tower Cooler and the ID Cooling Aura Flow. Perhaps I don't really need liquid cooling at my current setup, but the clean look it provided to my rig made me think it's not a bad decision at all going with an all-in-one cooler. Besides, the Auraflow is doing a fine job of keeping my temperatures low. My CPU still is able to boost to 4 GHz anytime it wants. The Auraflow X240 may prove useful on extreme overclock setups, but since my processor is locked, I'm unable to test. Let me know your thoughts by dropping a comment down below, and don't forget to hit that subscribe and bell button for more reviews, tips, and benchmarks. Thanks for watching, and see you guys soon.